Um, we have Ryder University versus Manhattan College, two colleges who have definitely been eager to prove themselves uh, throughout this entire league thus far. If we take a look at both of their results thus far, they've uh, both of them have been a little bit on the struggle bus uh, for the duration mm -hmm. of the season. However, they do have their shot at each other today to get a shot and a W out here. I've seen a lot of L's amongst both uh, universities so far. I think more W's in Manhattan College's favor, although I could be wrong on that one. It might be, actually it looks pretty even. So yeah, it looks like we got an even match up right here coming up for us. I believe we're gonna be starting off with Nifty Bean and Rizo Luca. I believe Rizo Luca plays Joker and Ness. And I believe, ah, I forgot who Nifty Bean played. I think maybe, I don't know. I'm not even gonna try and guess because I'm wrong 99% of the time when I guess anyway. But I hope everybody is here and ready and excited mm -hmm. because here we are this will be the second to last matchup we'll be we'll get to commentate until february so i hope you guys enjoy Ooh. the little time we have left uh it's been a blast honestly this entire time i've got to say so let's, let's keep up the good energy yeah i just wanted to say thank you to everybody that has stopped by everybody so far that has come out to show a little bit of support for our schools what well, you might be noticing though that both fang and i have with us two nice bottles Wild of water, turn. keeping ourselves hydrated. Why? Because we kind of care about our physical well-being, and, and so should you. Uh, drink water, guys. Uh, you'll make me really, really proud if you do oh, that. Yeah. And yeah, stay healthy, drink water, and make sure you're doing those stretches as well for both your hands and your body, pretty much, mm -hmm. um, because it's very important. Literally. Absolutely. You got to keep your health up. If you don't keep your health up, then the the, the hand man is going to take away your hands. He's done it to many a victim I've seen myself. So you got to be careful. To my hands, too. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Oh, These... yeah, your hands are... <laughs> They're Donskis. Um, and that's why I play with a box. Um, anyways. Uh, yeah, so we are going to be seeing, kicking off uh, our second to last set of schools for the evening. Ryder, uh, Ryder University up against um, Manhattan College. Manhattan College, that's right. And then after them, we should be seeing St. Peter's up against Fairfield University. Uh, we have been provided also graciously with um, the delicious sauce on who the players are. The right. first match upcoming should be Nifty Bean up against Ryza Luca. Now, both of these players, they sound really, really familiar to me, baby. But, uh... Couldn't tell you who they play for now. <laughs> yet. Yeah, the key word is yet. So game one, Ryza Luca up against mm. Nifty Bean. That's Ryza Kirby. Luca. Yeah. Ah, Ness. Okay. Sick, 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 sick. Yes, we see a lot of Nesses in this league thus far. I see is a very, very popular character in the collegiate league. Uh I gotta say this matchup on paper, uh really good for Ness when he's on stage, really bad for Ness when he's off stage. <laughs> Yeah, at least, at least below the ledge to, I, to an extent. I also kind of feel like Kobe has like all the boxing tools he needs to really make Ness feel uncomfortable, especially out of shield. Oh my gosh, Kobe pancakes when he hits your shield, and uh, he's a tiny, he's a tiny fella. Ness definitely struggles to hit him quite a bit. I feel like. Yeah, Nair is probably going to be Ness's best tool in this matchup, I think, so far, because Kirby doesn't really tend to jump too much, so you're not really going to get lots of calling out with fair. PK fire, dash back, always a good option to go for. It's pretty much Ness the safest uh, neutral tool within the game, depending on the facing of it. But Nifty Bean has him off stage once again. Going to give up the ledge absolutely just for free, not even a two-frame attempt to boot. I feel like it's mm -hmm. super important to at least try to go for that two-frame. What? Ooh, what a good what a edge guard. Fantastic right down B. That's, that's just textbook, man. That's what you got to be doing yeah. against Ness. Uh, yeah, really good stuff from Nifty Bean. It does a really nice clean for the stock. I'm um, starting to get some stuff going. A little bit of percent here and there. And I've got to say, guys, Luca is getting a little bit antsy with the way that they're landing on shield. Yeah, they're definitely like tunnel visioning. I feel like it's just a bit too hard. You have to be really careful when you are landing on mm -hmm. Kirby. This move is really good on Kirby to be using, though. PK True. Thunder. You can chase Kirby pretty much all around with it. Uh, you just have to make sure Kirby isn't directly above you so you can uh, get traded with. The, uh, the down B that Kirby has, but yeah, I think the mantra is just throw Kirby off stage and keep Kirby off stage. It's really, really important because the character does struggle quite a bit off stage, and they are light as hell as wow. well. Wow, very I don't easy. I know that throw. that DI felt like a little bit sus to me. Across the stage, 129. I mean, yeah, Kirby's a little bit light. Is he that light? Ooh, Nifty Bean getting a little bit too greedy with that punish. You always have to remember that PK Clash 
Uh, that move has a lot less le end lag than you think it does. Oh boy. Okay, yeah, great dash attacks. I gotta say, these dash attacks from Nifty being to catch Rise of Luka's landings are so, so good. That is a perfect move to catch landing. Moves Kirby pretty fast, pretty active hitbox. It's pretty strong for knocking uh, characters off the stage. Great avoidance right there on the down beat mm -hmm. right there from Rise of Luka. Just looking pretty solid, honestly. I want to see more nares out of shield, though, from Rise of Luka. I feel like they, they would just get Kirby off of him really, really easily. I don't know, both of them are just kind of scrapping a bit now. I, I feel like Nifty B and Zedge guys are definitely a little bit more solid than guys will because, um, ooh, what guys are going to go for here? He tries to go for the catching and the landing, but like, Nifty B and just mixing it up with their jumps. I like the way that they're pacing this game. They're keeping it nice and slow. A little bit of Zelda music, you know? Yeah. This is a little sl bit slower paced of a matchup right here, just by Kirby not being the quickest character. Like, my man's stubby little legs can only carry him so far. That is going to be a free grab Ooh. back throw right there for Rise of You got to be Can't very, very those. careful. You got to safely poke nest with Kirby using down tilt and stuff like that. Can't really be going for any brazen F smashes like we just saw. Yeah, and honestly, like, guys are just struggling to initiate so much, even though, like, 50 being is down and stuff. Um, I feel like Nifty being just like winning a lot of these exchanges. It's the back hit of down into F smash. That's uh that's a new one for me, but you know what? I guess I guess it does the job. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, great. PK Thunder usage right here. I don't know if the Oh, oh yeah, no. I, don't know I was about to say I would like to see a down B. Uh but not like that. Yeah, not that's like not that. the kind of down B I would have liked to see. Yeah, um PK Thunder like that, honestly. Almost every character that does have counter play to it, it's just throwing out a hitbox when it's close to you. You know, I, I feel like if Nifty being just like sort of press neutral in a lot of these instances, he would have just been able to smack the PK Thunder away, eat so much less damage. Like he ate a lot of damage as oh, a result. Yeah. You know, or at least actively look and bait that PK Thunder just so that he could uh, inevitably crush Ness. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Nifty Bean just has to be a little bit more careful about that going into game two. And Nifty Bean is able to adapt to PK Thunder properly. Uh, I think we got a set here, boys. Yeah, for sure. I think these two, like both these schools, like I said, are very evenly matched in terms of skill levels. Hopefully they can learn and adapt off each other uh, mm -hmm. really well. I want to see more safer poking from Nifty Bean, most likely. Just like more down tilts, less F smashes on shield because the, that's pretty much the most unsafe thing Kirby can do, especially a kill percent. And uh, for Rise of Luka, I want to see them try to like initiate just a little more, like try to catch landings with dash attack, nair out of shield a little bit, because you can stuff Kirby out quite a bit. Ness's uh, nair has got some good hitboxes on it. I like the PK Thunder usage quite a bit uh, from Rise of Luka. I like how they also moved a little bit to the left right there to kind of almost bait Nifty Bean to come down with the down beat because they saw they were just hovering directly over them like a UFO ready to abduct somebody. So yeah, it's that was really smart on his part. Almost unfortunate how that happened at the end, because you can really tell that Nifty Bean was trying to just recreate what happened here at stop one. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm over Ness. I've been in this situation before. But you see, he also barely clipped him there, just a little bit off on the spacing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it not being enough. It's tough because this is a very linear option to go for. Like you have to make sure your opponent's pretty much unable to do anything else when you try to go for that. So definitely gotta be careful. Um, I don't know if we're going to see a switch from anybody. I think Nifty Bean's pretty much been always a dedicated uh, Kirby player. Rise of Luka might whip out the Joker, but I don't know. Uh, I think Ness did just fine there, and Joker Kirby might go a little differently, mm -hmm. depending on how comfortable Rise of Luka is, because on paper, yeah, Joker kind of destroys Kirby, but in neutral, if you're fighting against Kirby and you're not really confident in your edge guarding or anything like that, it could maybe be a little difficult if you're not utilizing your character to its full potential. But yeah. Kirby players, if nothing, are very dedicated to their character. Oh yes, they love Kirby. They 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 they, they, yeah. they know he bad, but they still like him. They know he bad, but down tilt on shield go brrr. <laughs> uh, and that's and that's all there is to it. Be sure to mention how bad of a move down air is when he kills someone with it. Okay. <laughs> What's what's the meme about Downer again? Is there a meme about like, Downer being bad? Downer yeah. is just an actually pretty bad move. Okay, Inkling. Definitely a lot better of an option to go for here, but I feel like Nifty Bean has to be very comfortable with their spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, is it the character I remember Nifty Bean playing? Yeah, they, I know they had both. Um, I forgot, mm -hmm. though, that they definitely had an Inkling as well. I knew they had more than one character, but I, I remember them mainly being a Kirby player. 
Oh my gosh, who eyes are with these buttons? F smash and then down as the first two buttons. He's swinging, he's ready. He's yeah. ready to go. Ooh, that's a quite the sweet spot on Lila too. That's a, that's a nasty place to be in as Inkling tries to go for it all with the PK flash that may be able to convert it. Man, Lizo, I don't know what is smoking right now, but man. <laughs> he's 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 it's going the good at stuff it. for sure though. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, these F smashes too just to catch these dashes sword. I mean yeah, you always you really have everyone have a different perspective on characters, so for those people who play character at a low level, they may have a completely different set of tools, most likely because they don't watch a lot of other players. Or they just have a very Nifty unique B. perspective on their character. Nifty B just doesn't, looks like they don't know what to do right now. You know, Lizo, Lizo can't help but feel like Lizo's just having a bit of fun with this. Uh, yeah, Nifty Bean's like established like they kind of struggle to deal with PK Thunder. Um, they're kind of struggling to initiate an approach Nasty right now. But able to get a bit of damage going, able to get stage. Oof, Yeet. goodbye. Sure. Yeah, no, 150, that's going to kill it pretty much. Most of the cast maybe sands like a couple heavies. But either way, Nifty Bean has not been swinging as much as they could be. I feel like, I feel like they could be utilizing more back airs, trying to catch these landings. It looks like they're just moving around in their mac and cheese on the floor and then trying to get some started. Good slap bomb, though. A beautifully angled slap bomb, too. Guys, Aluka from the depths of hell was like, maybe, yeah, maybe I can make it. No, yeah, absolutely maybe. not. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. Okay, another forward throw coming out right there. I, I still like Ryzo. Ryzo seems to be picking up a little bit of momentum uh, now. Just kind of trying to chuck the opponent off stage using PK Thunder as well as Ness's other move to really just not let Nifty B come back to stage at all. Yeah. Ryzo, look at, again, getting all of this mileage off of PK Thunder, just scaling Nifty B at least. Ryzo wants that F smash out of PK oh, yeah. Fire every single time, and oh, yeah. we have yet to see it. Swing for the fences. Okay, good op for the F throw right there. Yeah, Nifty Bean just doesn't seem like they know how to deal with these uh, PK Fires. I think they need to oh, slow no. their game plan down just that a DI. little bit. That was a DI disaster right there. You know, guys are just sort of playing back right now. Nifty retreating. I, I feel like they just like don't know how to like jump in on Nest right now. Yeah. Uh, they're kind of they're kind of giving up like a lot of much needed space that they need to do things. This should be you, it. You pretty much have to play as evasively with, as possible with Inkling. Just like really try to move around quite a bit because the character is very quick and with the dash hitbox as well as their movement like they can uh, kind of weave in and out of Ness's range quite a bit. But once you get in on Ness, you have to keep pressing on him. You can't really let him get any breathing room whatsoever. And then back off when you know it's not safe anymore. Like, I feel like that's the key thing. Either way, though, the line drive right to Ness's face is going to take him out. Oh, boy. Again, going for the back field, not at the percent quite yet. I've got to say, Nifty being oh. quite the sniper, able to connect like oh. all these grenades on point. That's such a scary fair right there. Because if that yo-yo did connect, that would have been curtains right there for Nifty Bean. And again, goes through the back through this time, ready to be eye. A little oh, bit stale, hit. but there goes the PK flash. I can't it believe that such... hit. Yeah. That move's scary. That move's active. It's scary. It's two frames. Uh, it's it's big and strong. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And Ryzo Luka taking that pretty firmly over Nifty Bean, uh, that game one right there. That was really, really good stuff right there. Uh, just, yeah, I... Nifty Bean kind of just got caught up a little bit too much in the PK fires. Ness is really good at disrupting tempo and momentum, so you can't really get your sh movement started up if you keep getting clipped by PK fire. But I also felt like Nifty was just never comfortable going in. It just didn't seem like they had a solid game yeah. plan uh, of how to deal with Ness. And against Ness, you definitely need a game plan of some sort. Uh, but yeah, good stuff to Rise of Luca right there. Uh, giving it Manhattan College a little bit of an early lead right there. We'll see who we see next coming through. Mm -hmm. Uh, we should be seeing Yoshi Man 929 up against Hammer. Um, <laughs> is Yoshi Man the Yoshi? He is the we... Yoshi Bowser Jr. player. Is that is that like the one that we we all had in mind? Oh yeah, absolutely. Them. Yeah, um, I kinda, I just kind of feel like Reza Luca was like pretty confident. That's why they kind of played the way they did just now. Going for excessive PK fires, going through so many F smashes and down airs. Um, you kind of do that sometimes, you know, when, whenever whenever I'm up against an opponent and I just kind of want to play through funsies a little bit, I'll, uh, I'll play like a degenerate. These buttons, nobody's seen yeah, before. Exactly. 
If you've got the momentum, Ness can really just run away with it by just pressing all kinds of buttons. You got like blueberry. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Every time with OBS Ninja, <laughs> my have, like, a like whole beard. <laughs> my local feed looks fine, but for whatever reason, it's just the antithesis of Pog right now. Now you've got mustard hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had I had that jaundice. <laughs> Need to put you on the in incubator real quick. <laughs> that is really funny. Um, so it looks like we're having Yoshi Man and Crimson coming up next. I forgot who Crimson plays. I'm going to be keeping it at mm -hmm. that stack right there. I know Yoshi Man, though, plays both Yoshi and Bowser Jr. Uh, from what I saw. So we're going to see how Crimson deals with it. If they can keep the lead going for Manhattan College, that is going to be fire for them. Uh, but Ryder looking to take at least get some points on the board here just a little bit. Uh, but either way, we're waiting for both of these uh, collegiate students coming through. So... Yeah. We'll see. We'll see and of course, guys, uh, you know, just want to go and buy a couple of quick little announcements before, um, you know, we move on to the next set. So first and foremost, you guys should indeed be following this very channel um, that you're seeing right now. This is EGF SSBU. We're also uh, streaming this alongside official EGF. So you should go ahead and follow them, too. They are responsible for the event uh, that you see here today, the collegiate link. Uh, then you should also follow our lovely stream uh, producers. We have a fantastic production run by House of 3000, twitter.com slash House of 3K, or House of 3000. I shouldn't have abbreviated that. Uh, yeah, uh, Dill is doing a fantastic job. Devin does a fantastic job. They're truly responsible for bringing the pinnacle of production quality to Tri-State and especially New York. Um, if you aren't doing so already, you should go and follow Fang at Fan9S on Twitter, uh, Fan9S on Twitch, and Fang plays on YouTube. He posts some fantastic content, plays a little bit of video games, you know, talks a little bit about it too. Uh, and then if you are feeling oh so inclined, you could also follow me at Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Smash. You could follow me uh, on Twitch as well, Deramgar plus an I and an A at the end. So, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So now we are just waiting for Crimson and Yoshi Man mm -hmm. to hop in the lobby. Man, I wish I remember who Crimson played. I think we only got to commentate Manhattan College like twice this season. And I, mm -hmm. I know that's like a lot out of eight weeks, but like there's some schools we literally didn't get to see at all. Like, I don't think we got to commentate Hawaii one time. Well, uh, Hawaii, it's because it's been a good They're far. The yeah, they're far. Stream. Yeah, they're deep.gov. They uh, do be far. They do indeed be far. They do be part of the USA, though. And just like that, we will be seeing our next game. Let's get a little bit of energy going for Yoshi Man 929 Let's up against Crimson. All right, good tag, though. I don't know what character Crimson plays, but I'm assuming it's a character with a red skin. And it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. The only thing that's red is Kirby's feet soaked yeah. in the blood of his enemies. It's like orange. My man looks well, like I'm, a piece I'm of corn. Blind. <laughs> I, like candy I don't corn. <laughs> would, you, would you bully Kirby if you saw him just straight up? Uh -oh. I, would just hug, I would hug Kirby, <gasps> but I'd also be very worried that Kirby would eat me. Already, Great shot. <laughs> we're getting the classic here today. The good old Nintendo Wi-Fi connection coming through. Oh Got no! Got that fire net code. Oh no, baby! What that are you doing? Stuff. Not like this. Not like this, indeed. Um, I don't know if they're gonna play it out or what's gonna happen here. If they're just gonna switch it out or have someone else host or something like that. We saw this once already tonight in a similar manner where the connection wasn't really choppy, it was just like slow. Like everything was coming through, but it was just like a, a beat off. So we'll see how this goes. Either way, I hope you guys are having a great day today. We'll figure this out. Do not fret, do not stress, and do not worry. Just relax, just take it slow. Just look just this game. Look Chill. at this amazing gameplay. Sean, would you, would you bully Kirby? I'd probably give Kirby a hug. But I'd, only, I'd step only if, on him. Only if Kirby wouldn't eat me though. I would, I, would, I would step on him, honestly. You know, you know what I mean? There is no answer, so I assume no. <laughs> um, I would not bully Kirby. You would not bully Kirby. Unbelievable. Um, I think Kirby's cute. Nah. Maybe. So here we are debating whether or not Kirby is cute as this game is just slowly progressing through time. This oh, is yeah. the second time this has happened today. Oh me, oh my. What, so what, what do we, uh, what's the protocol here? 
it's looking like uh, they're gonna try hosting just like last time. Okay, good. So I Fantastic. still need. Yeah, let's go. Oh, well. Oh well. <laughs> I, I hope they leave. Get him out of here. <laughs> Could you imagine if they just tell me to? Yeah, we'll host, and then it, like they just start playing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's just go back and see. Just I don't know if both of these boys are wired. I'd have to assume so. Is, no, uh, I, I don't think it's even physically possible for that to be the case. I played with my friend in the UK, and it was fine. So, I mean, listen. The reality is, you only as good as the wired, yeah. you only you only as good as your ISP, right? Because more often than not, you know, you could have an expensive guy that could be wired and everything, but the real issue is that your circumstances simply have either too many people connected and eating up the bandwidth. Yeah, it is um, college Wi-Fi, so it can be or, a bit of a struggle. Or poor wiring. Um, I had to get the wiring redone in my home, and my uh, speed shot up dramatically, for instance. You know, sometimes faulty wiring is uh, uh, more often than not it can you know, the culprit. Yeah. Gosh, speaking of college dorms, mine is sweaty right now. It is, it is hot. Oh, they make those things into a. Like, it's either a meat locker or a sauna. <laughs> Like, yeah. they just don't know how to regulate temperature in college dorms, and you can't control it at all because, obviously, it's all under the college's pain uh, and suffering. Also, my camera is freezing occasionally. Not sure why that's the... Uh, college Wi-Fi, potentially, again? That's again. the case. No, Striking no, not back. my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi here is actually quite pods. I do say so myself. Um, I'm nice and warm. I have Ethernet. It's really nice. Um, yeah. So we're just chilling, guys. Chat, talk to us. We could always interact with you guys a little bit. We've shilled everything we need to. We talked about water and stretching and all the good stuff. Uh, so unless you want to hear us talk about like our favorite Chipotle orders, talk to us. What, what do we got going on? This is a stream, and, and uh, <laughs> we are here to serve the people. Right. It's you. The people. The peeps. Yeah. But yeah, we're just hanging out for now. Um, I wonder how things are going over on the other stream right now, how they're faring typically, uh, or rather currently. Um, but yeah, either way, hope you guys are enjoying the stream thus far. Hang in there. We will be with with an answer or lobby or something soon. Uh, it is getting cold out there, so make sure you have your chapstick on you to keep those lips at bay. I personally like to use Carmex. Carmex is, is so goaded. Carmex, Carmex is, goated. is so goaded. Especially for things like makeup as well. Thing. Oh my goodness. Carmex is quite pugs. Carmex is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just but yeah. Update, we are now joining another arena. Cool. Shouldn't be too long. So what are we up to lately, Dara? How are we how are we living? I'm just living the college life, man. I you know I had to go home for Thanksgiving for a little bit. I'm back here commentating, talking about Super Smash Bros. Uh, I've been doing a lot of commentary, man. That's that's exciting. This yeah, is what I here. like doing. Uh, we love we love talking about our video games. Oh yes, this is a ooh, hold <laughs> this on. This is a bump. Oh, this hits different. Ooh. Oh, I wait for that cricket. Ooh. Ooh. He's Ooh. kind of spitting good right now, I yeah. have to say. Um, but yeah, other than that, not not too much has been going on. What about you, Sean? What's happening in the life of the fan I know? Um, a lot of playing Persona 5, some working out, a lot of commentating and a lot of streaming and a lot of prepping for my anniversary. So, yeah, we're just kind of chilling out. We're nice. doing our thing. Uh, I recently got a new computer, which I'm not using right now, actually, to cast this. I do not have a USB-C converter yet, so I, I have to use my old, my gaming Tragic. laptop to, to do this on. But uh, I think it's okay. Like, we're living. We're out here. I got my nice little bright keyboard literally pri propped up next to me with all the flashy little rainbow lights and stuff like that. And my computer's just vibing down here. 
They're offering to settle this in chat uh, with a Minecraft PvP money match. I'm okay with that. That sounds fun to me. We could cast that. We could cast that? Could I'd that. agree so. I played Minecraft before. Minecraft PvP. <laughs> yeah. Is there even depth to it? Is it? Is it I feel like you just hit each other. <laughs> I feel like yeah. it's just who swings harder on the other person, literally. I figure there's not much nuance to it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if you guys, I don't know. Actually, we've already shelled like three times. We've shelled. We've shelled. Started, so. We have no more <laughs> shells left in us, friends. Um. Yeah. That is how it be out here. Uh, so I guess, what is your favorite video game that you've been playing lately besides this one, Dara? Besides this one, this. Besides um... this one. Have you been playing other video games besides this video game? Not as much as I would have liked to. I've been playing a lot of Melee again, which is nice because Melee is game. sick. <laughs> Melee Ness is sick. Probably the sickest iteration of Ness, period. Anything with double jump cancel anything is quite pug. Uh, yeah. Sure. You should play a project. Guys, Plus. you owe it to yourselves to go and play a floaty. Every, everybody go 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 play yourselves a floaty. This is go terrible play advice. Peach. Go play Mewtwo. <laughs> absolutely garbage. Go advice. play Peach and Mewtwo, especially in Melee. Because you know how cool Melee Mewtwo is, man? Maybe he is so cool, sick. But very under Why'd you say that so reluctantly? He's cool. No, he is cool. Oh, he's cool, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Wait, is today wait song is hitting so hard. When is the Super Smash Bros. second anniversary? I think it's coming up really soon. Hmm. Apparently that's coming up soon. So yeah, once again, we're just waiting for them to hop into the arena. We're just trying to fill up all this dead air with us speaking about video games. Yeah, not not a whole lot going who on. What's this? Is there arena music? Come Monsters. In. That's who. I guess in the meantime, I actually like this as a battle song too, which is really funny. Mm -hmm. Just like the ambience of blows being traded between both characters, while you know. But not a good arena music. Arena music needs to hype you up. This is pretty hype. This is like a good break time song, where we're just like, you know, it's like a in between. It's like, we'll be right back with this going on. I'm a little Here. bit tempted to change the music, but, but, you I, but I can't. I can't. You're not I vibing. Can't. Yeah. Okay. We want everyone to vibe here. I've, I've just got, I'm just very tolerant with a lot of music, honestly. I feel like music will not change. That's right. Environmental noises stays on during sex. <laughs> All right, we're game getting moves. into it, though. Finally. Game one between. Hopefully, game one. I wouldn't say finally. Three, two, and we got a hype song. We got Soul Gaily oh, and Nala. This is a good nice. song. All uh, right. Oh, look at that. Smooth. Relatively. Fantastic. They can, oh. This is looking okay, yeah. This is a good play. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh oh. Uh, you can see the people in the back. I think someone's not wired. Here. Someone's Sean, definitely not wired. Look here. at the people in the back. Look how oh, slow my. they're moving. Oh, my. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah, right. baby. Uh, that's what I I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, baby. That's that's what it's all about. Um, I think it would be appropriate here to cut to a break. What do you think, Dylan? <laughs> what are we going to do here? Yes, this instant replay is so good. Oh, my God. Take a look at that. Woo! Woo! Someone's definitely not watching. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm almost certain of it. I, I can smell it when someone's not wired. Maybe because maybe after Dill got kicked, the connection will be fine enough for them to play. Either way, we'll find out what's going on. Um, but yep. yeah, look look at look at those little pogs go. They're going. That is the first time I have said pet pog. Guys, not the very to the face. very important. Buy a LAN adapter for your Switch. It is literally recommended from Nintendo to buy one. Literally if you buy don't it. Buy one, Plug if it you to your don't Switch. buy one and you have listen, not everybody has the ability to get Ethernet, but if you can get Ethernet and you choose not to use it, you'll hurt my feelings. And you can, you don't do, you can even that. get a power line adapter or something, just anything. Like literally, just get something that'll enhance your connection instead of just using the raw switches cape. It is a little slab, it is a little tablet. 
it will not be able to boost your internet to its optimal capacity. Uh, you should get one and use it, please. If you intend on playing this game online, or you have to play this game online, just get one. It is like one is like ten bucks, ten to fifteen dollars. It's not a lot of money, you know. So, look into getting one, buy it. It'll also serve you well in other Nintendo games that you might have to play online, or it, it'll even just serve you well in other games. Pretty sure a lot of consoles can use Ethernet adapters as well. Uh. Don't quote me on that, but um, yeah, no regardless. other other content. Some of them, some of them have like a built-in uh, thing yeah, for you yeah, yeah. So you just need a string of cords. Some of them do require an external adapter. Um, so either way, you should go out of your way and get one, please, for the love of God. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. We're just we're just chilling for now. We're just vibing to to some environmental songs. So we're finding out that both of these schools are completely online. So oh, they're yeah. Not, they're not sharing oh, any hell switches. Yeah. Okay. So, so oh, we just... Yeah. I, wait, did you say that on air? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't know if it was like just to us who on on, uh, on air. Well, there, there we have it. Um, so uh, we might try Manhattan College to host. And okay. if that doesn't happen... Then, then we need new protocol for this, this oh, type yeah. of situation. This sh- this should almost be a requirement. I feel like literally. Yeah, unfortunately, we do not have uh, lag detect set up for this switch. Only the other one, so the other stream can have we can weed out the lagger, but not here. I think both of them are lagging. That's my it's my uh my call out. That's my hard call out. They're still fighting each other. I don't really know why. It just gives me anxiety that they're playing it out. <laughs> Can you imagine the pain and the suffering that they're both going through <laughs> playing this game at, at, at 0.5 times speed? Oh my gosh. Someone tweeted today that Nintendo added themes to the Switch, and I was lied to. Oh my god! You you got you got me, me I excited. Played. I thought Nintendo was gonna do something cool. Dill. Look at that! Oh wait, they're going both going in for the clank. Oh my god! What is this? Here we go! Boom! Look at him, Brewster attacking a robot. It looks like I don't know what game that's from, but I know Brewster's from Animal Crossing. He makes you coffee. Makes you some nice coffee you can drink. You can listen to his music. I wish they added him back to the current Animal Crossing, but this Animal Crossing was just devoid of life. It was good. It was good in the the gameplay sense, but in the character and whatever else sense, it's a little hollow. Not gonna lie, Nintendo. Not gonna Uh, lie. Pain and suffering, friend. Either way, we're back at it again with the white vans. Just waiting for them to play it out. I don't know what's gonna go on. What's gonna happen? We're already. 46 minutes into the block. So we might have another late running one again, depending on how this goes. Hope you guys are having a good day. Mm-hmm. I'm vibing. We're vibing. Um, pain. Pain is right. Wow. Who well, Who's next? You decide. Well, did why they play did you, it out? You just quoted epic rap battles of history in 2020, man. They did. That uh, that threw me back a little bit. Epic rap battles of history is pretty cool. I like it. I, I grew up with it. All right, so I don't really know what's going to happen here. At this Neither do here. I, because they haven't yeah. they haven't filled us in. So we just. We just hopefully the best friends. <laughs> yeah, we break. You're definitely getting limited information from the captains. It <laughs> seems to be that they actually played that out. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Do they want us to cast that? <laughs> Would they like us in the arena? I mean, we're here. Nah, we're good. We're just, you know. Online chess. The lag was giving me <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what we should stream instead. Well, we should just both... stream us playing chess. They just we need to get a wired connection. It'll be so much better. I promise. I promise if we just both go on wired, it'll be so much better. It won't be the perfect, but please, please just hook up your Switch to your internet. I beg you. Please. Yeah. Please. Someone, please. Okay. Oh, boy. But yeah, here we go. Just here we go, them. baby. I don't know if they're gonna play it again. We got more gaming ahead happen. of us. I'm ready to game though. I'm ready ready for gaming. You ready to game? I'm quite ready to game myself. Ready to be a gamer. This is a, some a very serene track though to put in the game. Very bold decision on Nintendo's part. Is this really from Pikmin? Like, is this something you can actually hear in Pikmin? Um, I think it's just ambient music. But yeah. Um, yeah, Pikmin doesn't have themes for the world, typically. Oh, really? So it's like very minimal? Yeah, I like... believe like, you know, you'll like, I think if you get into an encounter with an enemy, some music starts playing for that encounter. But generally, oh. if you're just looking at a giant strawberry, right. you're listening to the sound of the crickets. <laughs> the giant right. crickets. So it's kind of like Breath of the Wild where it's like pretty minimal. Dill, you should, you should stream me playing chess. Yeah, I, I want to learn how to play chess. chess. Oh, you don't, you don't want to play chess, Sean? I don't know how to play chess. Where's the chess board? Well, I don't. I don't. Have I was gonna. I was gonna play with somebody in chat. If you think so, <laughs> fine. While we wait, because uh, we gotta. We gotta figure out the time somehow. Sean, <laughs> do you not know? Do you not know how to play chess? So, an update. I, can I teach asked, you. "Are we going to the next match with this host? Did the connection improve?" And they said, "Our guy said no. It was still bad. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> but they played it through. They did play it through. So who won? Um, I believe Yoshi, Yoshi Man, Man right? won with yeah. a one stop." Man. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I can't even say anything. This is great. We're just waiting. We're just vibing. There's really nothing to say, honestly, at this point. Like, I'm not, like, this is like a test. I feel like for us as casters to see how much time we can mm -hmm. stall for, but I am not that type of caster. I am not bred. No, for that no, no. Environment. We have stalled. I think we've stalled. We have literally used time. every card in our book. We did the shilling. We did the state of affairs. We did random. How how is your day going? Banter. I have not like what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else is there to say? You know. After this, I'll probably work out and play Persona Five. That's what I'm. You don't do. have anything to unbox for us today. Oh. Um, and Dora, you don't have any Pokemon cards. Like, I guess we can. I, I, guess I do we have can funny Pokemon get cards. Props. Let's look at um, some stuff. All right, so this is my. Let's take a look. You know, things arrived at Fang's house in all those bags. That's why they're back there. Yeah. So this, these are what I got for this. This is my Christmas gift to my girlfriend. Um, Spoilers. I got her. Well, yeah, don't tell her. Um, they are specialized chocolates that are are they're giant chocolate bars that all have themes to them. Uh, this one is s'mores, so it's got like um, dark chocolate, yeah, mm -hmm. dark chocolate and graham cracker bits and marshmallow. This one is donuts and coffee, so it's got textured chunks of fresh hot donuts gathered from the best donut shops in LA and some milky coffee chocolate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this one is chocolate chip cookies, which is pretty much a no-brainer. Now you got cookie dough and milk chocolate. So they theme the chocolate to what is going to be with it as well. So and they all have really cool packaging on them. Like whoever graphically designed these, like these are all fantastic. So I am currently cooking somebody in chat in chess right now. And I got her some Kira. AirPods. I have uh -huh. I got her name engraved on AirPods as well. So I think she'll like these. Um, I also have a bag of hot snacks that I have. Fantastic. I'm, uh, I'm happy to hear this, Sean. Are these all for your anniversary or for Christmas? Like we have. Yeah, we got a typical Flaming Hot Cheetos. 
I'll wait for my camera to catch up. Flaming Hot Cheetos. Spicy Doritos. Extra Flaming Hot Cheetos. Look at that. That's incredible. This is this is genuinely pretty adorable, I have to say. Um, um Yeah. So what do you guys want for Christmas? <laughs> oh Sean. <laughs> What's on everybody's Christmas list? Let's let's hear it in chat. Just an average day here on EGFS is for you, absolutely. Yeah. Oh man, I think I think something happened with you, Ida. But either way, I'm really entertained right now. I have to say. I want people to know that your your on your Wi-Fi does not matter because the speed test is going through your computer. It doesn't matter what your wireless internet speed is. You need to have a wired connection because it will not be stable otherwise. The connection will literally not be st the the wired the wire stabilizes your internet. I want to make that abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. The Wi-Fi stabilizes your input. An off, an online connect, uh, yeah, an online connection, or rather, a Wi-Fi connection is not stable because it it's tend to it tends to fluctuate. Hence the word unstable. So it doesn't matter how good your upload or download speed is, if you do not have that wire connecting to your switch, it will not be stable. It will drop. <laughs> You will have hiccups here or there. It might be smooth sometimes, but it could be so much smoother if you have a Wi-Fi connection. I'm telling you, I promise. I'm not, this is not some tinfoil hat shit. I'm not making this up. Either way, we're out here. Oh, you know what other game, play, game I've been playing a ton of lately, Dara? Talk to me, Sean. Game I just Fortress made a really 2. bad blunder and I feel like a silly little goose. I've been playing a lot of Team Fortress 2. Shouts to you, Team Fortress 2. Team really good game. Too. Great FPS. Um, Sean, who do you who do you play in TF2? Who do I main? Oh boy. So, um, for competitive, I'm thinking of playing Phil. So I'll just play any character that our team is lacking. But my, the character I've gotten the best results with, and, and just casual pub lobbies, is heavy. So, and he's definitely the character I had the most play time with, just because he's the only character I have an unusual hat for. Um. I really like Scout and Demo, though. They're mm -hmm. really fun to play as well. Uh, I'd say Demo is probably my best competitive character. Since the competitive format, it's like two Scouts, two Soldiers, one Medic, one Demo. Who do you like, Dill? Because I know Devin has told me that you also played TF2 at one point. Uh, yeah, I used to play it a lot before Hats existed. So way back. The orange box days. Yeah. Uh, I made I'm getting them. I'm getting slapped up in chess right now. I feel I feel like a silly little goose. I made I I made some blunders. Oh, buddy. Yeah, I used to main demo competitively and just demo play night. a lot of everyone casually. Everyone's so f every every character is so fun to play except Pyro. You Pyro only, can be fun in certain. You play, so this is Orange Box Days Pyro. You can't even. Oh yes, oh yeah. <laughs> What can oh, you, you couldn't do? air blast? No. So oh. what you could do is you could keep NG's company and, you know, cre Just spy check for create them. a bond with them. <laughs> you wanted to help out. You want to play TF2, but you're trash at most FPS games. It's honestly, the skill floor for it is really low. Like, it is pretty easy to access. I have a friend who just got into it. And you can go into casual lobbies like with a friend that you're good at. Like we'll trade that. You could also should we trade that? We should trade that. Play we should definitely trade that. And now you're not playing an FPS. Yeah, TF2. Yeah, you could. Certain classes don't really feel like an FPS at all. Honestly, half of them. NG, Pyro. Yeah, uh, yeah it's true. The only classes that really feel like a true FPS are like Scout, uh, Heavy, Sniper. Like most of other, they all have like set game plans that you follow. It's really fun. Definitely get into it. It's also free to play. Oh, uh, and with that being said, I yeah. might have to. You can uh, see that people are coming back into this match with their laggy Wi Fi characters. Uh, oh, five D -D -D. Timer. Look at that. Quite a good word for myself, I would think. Five Look minute at timer. This. Hopefully, this doesn't come into play. The person who's hosting. All right, we're into it, I guess. That. So, so, is, uh, is so Yoshi Ben playing DDD? DDD? Yeah, this is this is something I can talk about for a nice little minute. Uh, so Kirby DDD, man, once once Kirby gets in, 
Oh, oh buddy, this is this is a tough one for DDD. But realistically speaking, Booby has no way of getting off of uh, off stage back onto on stage again. DDD is such a good edge guard, able to throw out so much stuff out there. Uh, just able to have so much sustain. Um, so really the game plan and win condition for the Yoshi man is like, how can I get Kubi off stage to kill him? Because yeah, it is, it is definitely Kubi. Uh... It's, it's free. Yeah. Also, Kirby might have a little bit of difficulty dealing with Bordo and getting in on DVD, since DVD does have a little bit, fair, a fair amount more of range. Uh, and I believe, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it hail bigger for DDD than it is for Kirby? Yeah, some, something along those lines. Um, we can we can look at a hitbox visualization. A pretty good mix and, up. Uh, but the point is, is, like DDD is going to be consistently landing it. It's much more difficult for Kirby to land their inhale uh, yeah. than it is for DDD. Yeah, for sure. Just because DDD's game plan is also just relatively different from Kirby's, where it's to keep the opponent at like somewhat of a respectable distance. Mm -hmm. Most um, well, people Kirby just wants to scrap. Yeah, most people buff who jump out of inhale. Uh, and so calling out with Florida, really good choice. Able just to land a god down in. Gonna eat a moldy jab, eats a little bit of percent. Already only three and a half minutes on the clock. I'm afraid this might be a thing that comes into play, Sean. Oh boy. This is looking tough for Crimson to nail this stock off right here. Uh, Kirby might struggle to kill a little bit on DDD just given how heavy DDD is while uh, Yoshi men try to look for their opening jab. Not going to do it just yet. Lauded, lauded by many to be Kirby's worst move, honestly. Yeah, it's it's definitely, it's especially difficult for Kirby to get a like, nice solid hit on DDD. He likes to pick the lane um, for the most part. But once again, Crimson with these Kirby combos on deck, dropping it a little bit earlier than they would have liked it to. Oh boy. Yeah, Using so the... we're just seeing uh, we're just seeing the DD trying to get in like really, really well right now. But however, Crimson just been kind of winning the poke war just a little bit more. Oh, the jab reset, but they got nothing off of it. That would have been so cool if they could follow up off of it. Yeah, unfortunately, nothing quite yet. That's a double hit. Gordo right back onto Crimson, eating so much percent just for that. I'm surprised no conversion off the late hit of dash attack. That's usually like a back hit or something. Able to air dodge right through that F smash. Uh, Yoshiman gonna go high, going to just avoid uh, the up B altogether. Ooh, that was really good. That was almost like huge vibe check right there for uh, Yoshiman. Speaking of what, vibe check. That was the jet hammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Kirby's uh, tea bag. I love the little squishy Kirby. Bag. He's, I, I love DDD, man. He's beautiful. Just the way he is. Ooh. um able to extend it with the dash attack. No attack coming from Yoshi quite yet. Tries to use a bit of the armor from the down B to help himself land. Okay, good chase from Crimson right there, but gonna get shield grab for their trouble. Now this is looking a little worse for them. Just going for the big up up B right there. Probably trying to get the damage on the ground or maybe potentially get a spike. Since I believe he can spike on the downswing of that move. Ooh, really good mix up on the landing. Definitely just like faked out and baited the option. And with a minute on the clock, Yoshi Man able to clutch out game number two. And yeah, that'll be it for the set right there. So Yoshi Man is going to take it over Crimson 2 0. Right. And we've got pretty much even Stevens in terms of uh, both of these universities right now. I believe both Yoshi, Boshi, Yoshi Man and Ryza Luka both won by one stock. So now we're sitting at a hot 4 4 score right now. Hopefully the connection irons mm -hmm. itself out for future sets but either way we got two more players coming up pretty soon so i'm excited to see which uh which school is going to be dominant here mm -hmm. man i wish we got to see a little bit more of, uh ddd play I, I i love ddd he's my baby boy he's a character uh-huh say that say that say what you really think i i <laughs> I, I felt that i felt that I felt the malice. He exists on the character select screen. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. I just that's just a personal statement. I just want to see a Nest player fight a DDD and destroy them. That's all I yeah. want. Yeah, best Nest lost to Guile recently. Yes, they did. I don't think they played Nest though. Um, yeah, I think it was like Little Mac or something. He played Little Mac and then Palu, which is like okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Best Nest is a multi-character specialist, but I feel like that their core, they will always be a Nest player. 
His like, tag is best nest. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Literally, if your tag is best nest, like. <sighs> but yeah, now we are simply awaiting our next two players. We have. We are anticipating the Sonic Ray, the one and only, up against Hammer from Manhattan College. So we are just waiting for them to jump into the arena. So we're in it for the long haul tonight, boys. I, oh, yeah. My body is starting to shut down after stalling that much. <laughs> uh, yeah. What can I say? So yeah, Sonic Ray versus Hammer. I believe Hammer plays Ryu, if I recall correctly. The Sonic Ray, I think, plays Pikachu. Mm -hmm. I think. I e think. Potentially. Who knows anymore? My brain, mashed potatoes. Full of mashed potatoes right now. Step into the ring. Do, 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 do. So hopefully the connection will hold up for the rest of the night. Yeah, that's 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 my hope too, friend. Hopefully it will come in clutch. But the possibility is still there, so all we can do in the meantime is just hold on to that hope. Yeah. Honestly, that's all we have, to be honest. It's just to, to, look, to look on to hope. It's to really hold on to our hope. But yeah. I'm just... Uh, so today I was reminiscing about um, uh, old tournament venues. What's the best food place you've ever been to in terms of like aesthetic or so, just like overall quality of food from at tournaments we have a bit of a strange situation that we're gonna need Boy. some sort of ruling on is mm -hmm. um who just won uh yoshi man. Yoshi, man. yoshi man from rider so yeah yoshi man is saying he doesn't want to claim his game one victory and wants to replay <laughs> it because he <laughs> it was too laggy and it shouldn't have been played out I don't know why I'm getting this information at the end of the set. Yeah, it's true. Um, theoretically, in in-person rules, you're only allowed to go back up to one match. But we'll have to have a ruling from actual hosts on it, I suppose. But I we think are if, very far behind. If I were... I think we're kind of a little bit over time right now we're like pretty deep i think we literally only have half an hour till the next block starts so if time is it isn't a concern you know there are other people that like for the time slots you are making a time commitment for that time mm -hmm. so i would say just take and keep going since both of them did agree to play it out just they hold the w yeah, just, just hold, hold the w the i know you don't want to take it that way but there's also eight more weeks after this like literally so how you just take it take the w yeah Got to keep it moving one way or another, but of course that is out of our jurisdiction. We'll see what the others say. Either way, yeah. So, Dar, what 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 was your favorite like place to dine at a tournament before? Oh man, the Zeno Dumpling Place. All right, guys, let me tell you. Let me tell you guys about North Dumpling. Let me let me tell you. Let me tell you guys a little something something. I want. I'm going to take you through a little trip. It's 12:30 in the morning. It's 12:30 a.m. You're exhausted, you're tired, your hands are aching, your, seat, your, your, your feet are a little bit tired from sitting on some aluminum chairs, and you step out into the venue, you step out of the venue, you step into um, the cold, really pleasant, cool Chinatown air, and the only thing on your mind is one, I'm exhausted, two, I hate this game, three, I want to put something into my mouth, and the thing that has always been there for me, no matter what time of the day it was, is North Dumpling. I took, uh, you walk over two, three blocks, you would get, oh my God, Dill, how many dumplings did we get in food? What cost? Bountiful, juicy, big, delicious dumplings. So crispy. Um, and, and you know, and they were like $3, $3 for, for the massive portion of dumplings in the sauce. Fantastic, it was so acidic and so salty and so savory. Man, I'm telling you, no matter how depressed I was after bracket, going 0-2, going 1-2, I would go back into North Dumpling and I would get myself some dumplings and all of that pain would dissipate. I do, um, hmm? I do want to mention about the New York Chinatown dumpling scene. Um, mm -hmm. It's become rarer and rarer, but there are some five dumplings for one dollar. Oh, which wow. is an even better deal than... That's actually but they're not North Dumpling. North Dumpling has a special place in my heart, though. 
they will never be North Dumpling. But then, alternatively, my second favorite experience is the Long Island experience of 3 a.m. You're oh, with a bunch of people that you don't, don't know, do and you go to Denny's. Oh, Guys, man. going to Den <laughs> Denny's is a culinary institution. You don't go to Denny's for the food. You go there for the experience. Because what happens at Denny's Fair stays enough. at Denny's, especially after the degenerate hours, which oh, yeah. is the only time you should be going to Denny's. We have had all sorts of encounters at Denny's that we will never speak of again. Is that right, Sean? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's I mean, been a lot of lunacy at Denny's before that play. They, they, I don't think you'll truly ever have an atmosphere like uh, 1 a.m. Denny's. 1 3 a.m. Denny's. 3 a.m. Denny's, Sean. It's always different each time. Oh, my gosh. And when you're with good people, mwah, delicious. And then my third favorite experience, although a very close third, is no matter where I am, the availability of Taco Bell. Period. Uh, you guys know how I feel about Taco Bell, about those $1 beefy burritos. Mm. Just the way that mama used to make it. You know what I mean? Uh, my mom didn't make burritos, uh, but, but I said it for the sake of saying it. Those are some interesting picks, I gotta say. But I, I appreciate the thought behind them. For me, I, my top three would probably be number one, Oh god, this is gonna come. So number one is the chicken and waffles, or just like <laughs> dining at TikTok Diner, uh, both at DTN and Let's Make Big Moves. That those are like, oh, those are so good. Second of all would be the restaurant at uh, at Smash and Splash, mm -hmm. uh, the in venue restaurant. A little pricey, but like it's just such a relaxing atmosphere. And number three, I'll get to another time because we got Marth versus Sonic right now. Pokemon Stadium too, and look already the connection. Mm, look at that connection, it's beautiful. It's crisp. I like to see it. A hammer going, Marth and the Sonic Ray playing Sonic. I don't know why I didn't see this coming. Maybe a Sonic with his tag. Maybe he he is the Sonic Ray. Oh yeah, right now, ooh, unfortunately, slightly misplacing that uh, dash attack. They're not getting the exact hitbox that um, they had anticipated in the moment. Ooh, good get up attack. Now, you know, guys, I, I think I think that's uh, I think I think that's really smart. Sometimes you just gotta wait before you like wake up option. And oh boy, what's uh, what oh what's boy. going on? Is this neutral? Or are they just slowing it down a bit? Oh boy. Right now, the Sonic Ray has all the stage control that they want. <laughs> he just slowly waltzed on it. But the big tip, the big tippy coming out of, of Hammer right now, aka Marty, apparently. That's <laughs> such a cool name for a Marth player, Marty. <laughs> I love how the Sonic Ray is just walking everywhere. Yeah, that's just... that's micro spacing, baby. Sometimes Sonic doesn't have to go fast. My man, my man can afford to. You know, even his walking speed is pretty quick if you think about it. But uh, I gotta say, Hammer doing a really great job right now just using Mart's uh, Tipper Rain to keep the Sonic Ray at bay so far. Now, I gotta say, this this Sonic Ray, I, have, I haven't uh, seen him play like this before. Um, so I don't, I don't really know what's going on here. Maybe this is a very specific Mart counter play. Runs off stage in neutral air dodges. Wow. Right now, Sonic Ray tries to catch a win with the up smash and able to find a really good conversion from Hammer. Um, able to get a little bit of damage next hit. Um, is definitely going to be able to take it. I feel like Marth um, is a character who, like, he'll either, like, kill you at 70 or he's just going to struggle to kill you uh, until, like, obscene percent. You want to know a fun fact about Marth? Hmm. He's voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, who is the same guy who voices Sasuke in Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> I fantastic. Thank you for your contribution, Sean. Oh um, man, but my man is swinging for the fences right now. Just swinging that sword as Marth should be doing, to be honest. What is, what is happening? Man. What is even going on anymore? I think, Matt, I think up throw will kill at this point for Marth. Yeah, up throw kills right around like what? 160, 170? Something like that. But it doesn't <laughs> matter. Doesn't matter, hammer, hammering down right there on the Sonic Ray right there. Kind of just like facing them out really nicely and just boxing them out. Sean, what happened this game? 
What's even going Mark on? Mark swung his sword and, and sliced and diced his way to victory with the Falchion. Why Why so many Daudos? Why did so many Sweet Spot and Spike Daudos connect? I have to say, I'm so mad at people who don't put Marth that high on their drip tier list for Smash. His fit is probably the cleanest fit in the entire game, to be honest. Look at this black this black alt right here. Tell me that this this it doesn't look clean in that one screen. I mean it's it's suited up. Yeah. Mar Marth shops at Bed Bath and Beyond. He's always hygienic. My man, my man is pampered and posh on the battlefield. Jesus, that big tipper. That was a monster tipper right there. Yeah, it just seems like Sonic Ray just got kind of overwhelmed and, and mm -hmm. uh, zoned out by Marth's sword quite a bit. Tried to go for those big hits, to, but I don't even think Up Smash would have killed because it's kind of one of Sonic's weaker smash attacks. I think F Smash is the one that everyone typically opts for, but... Yeah, yeah. This stock right here is definitely... <laughs> he just is standing on the... <laughs> It's just 42%. <laughs> See, he was standing on one side of the stage. He should have stayed there. He was safe. <laughs> He's just standing there. He knows he needs to be on the left side. He's like, oh god, I gotta go do something about this one. Boop. Gets F tilted. Tries to jump. Boom! Big tip. Oh no. I submit that you should not be able to get a tipper on the high part of the sword because no one thinks it hits there, and that's, that's not true. fair. That's like the best tipper to get, also, too, because it catches your jump. I concur, Dill, but we're out here. Regardless. Either way, we're waiting on game two right now. I don't know if we're going to see a counter pick from the Sonic Ray whatsoever, but this. I think Hammer played really well that game and just kept spacing out. The best he could. But we'll see. We'll yeah. See. Oh my god. That was that was that was that felt like one of the longest games I've uh, I've looked at it a minute. That was the game for sure. That was definitely a game. <laughs> we were truly gaming. I don't even know what else to say anyway. Why why did they play like that? Why was the Sonic really walking everywhere? Why did you know Hamlet land so many grounded doubters? I I don't have <laughs> answers. I just simply do not. Oh boy. This song's also a bop. Apparently this song is like in every persona game too. Which I didn't know, because I've only played one Persona game. Yeah, this is every, absolutely in every Persona game. There's a great video you can watch of, like, every Persona game has its own, like, singer, pretty much. Oh, that's cool. And you can, like, it's like a live performance of each of them singing, oh, like, so cool. the trademark song. DM two, that's really cool. One, go! Give Take it to you. Take we it got to my man. Babe. Yeah, we got my <laughs> man Packy Derm in the back of the stage, waltzing back and forth. Just holding up that sign, telling people to stop. This is uh, literally his job. His job is literally to walk back and forth on Yoshi's. That's all he does. He's time. been doing this for two decades. For years! Wow, for almost, almost two decades, my, my son was back there. <laughs> but right now, Hamley trying to get a little something started, but man, all these... uh, Not, not getting the tip is tough. Again, tip is tough, not able to get too much going. All of that just looked so unsafe on hit. But sonically, trying to extend a little bit with the back here today. Oof. I'm very curious to see the logistics of this uh, this counter pick because I feel like this counter pick almost favors Marth a little bit more than it would favor Sonic, but maybe it's a comfort fit for ESR. Uh, speaking of comfort pick, my man looking way more comfortable now this time around, just kind of waiting for Hammer to come close to him. And uh, hitting him with the good Sonic Classic. We're now just letting a grounded up match, catching uh, that whiffed aerial. And now the Sonic, we see them sitting uh, quite the lead for themselves, only at 70%. But this is Marth, baby. He can uh, he can steal these stocks like nobody else. Okay, though. 
Okay, the chargeback. I said I like I like how well Hammer has been catching these landings from CSR. I'm not gonna make it back there, unfortunately, with that air dodge. And we're looking at a more even game. Yeah, uh, it seemed like Hammer needed a little bit of wake up call time, but I like how reserved he's been playing. He, he's been he was swinging a lot that game one. Now it's all of a sudden he seems to be waiting a bit more for TSR to come in on him. Sonic is just you know looking to cover these air dodges with the neutral air, but it's a little bit too late on a reaction for them. Okay. Catches the landing, but unfortunately, getting knocked out of that hit right there. Mm -hmm. It's oh all of these moves, but they're pretty, pretty much going unanswered. Oh, they're swinging. They're swinging for the fences. Oh. Oh, that was the weirdest <laughs> clank ever. Yeah. Sonic was just like stuck with his legs broken while Marth was like, I can just put my sword back. That has to do with uh, Sonic's rebound animation, and I guess it just lasts a really long time for some reason. Yeah, I, I, I just like the gameplay that uh, Hammer is exhibiting right now. He's just waiting for TSR to come within his range and just retreating back, playing pretty safely, not overextending pretty much at all, like swinging his sword in all the right places. Like he's swatting away a fly. Yeah, absolutely. I just feel like right now the Sonic is just not able to properly react and whip punish. But this time though, catching Mugs extended hurtbox with the F smash. Uh, people, people really don't seem to always acknowledge the fact that Sonic's F smash, that move is massive. It's no powerful reason. too. Yeah. It's two frames, it's quick, it, it, it does everything. Oh my god, trying to get that high part of the tipper right there, just trying to find their kill as TSR has resorted to platform camping. <laughs> He's just running away. <laughs> Sonic does doing what he does best, which is run. Had the right idea on that get up attack, but unfortunately no punish. Hammer just looking to get one more shot. The Sonic way. No no chill, man. It seems like he's got the game plan a little more firm now, which is just wait for Mark to overcommit and then with punish. However, it might be a little too little too late, I feel like. Because if Hammer does get one more one one of these strong hits, it's gonna be curtains for TSR. That back here oh. is not going to be quite yet, unfortunately. Not a tipper again. Commits off stage. This could be the death of him, but that dash attack, still not going to take it. Oh my gosh. Poor body fans. That's the lead grab. No. The down smash coming out. Not going to take it just yet. Tried to run off and do the fair. Not going to quite catch it in the big F match. That's the roll right there from TSR. And Hammer will be going up. Taking that set too well. To lose. Thank you, Sasuke. <sighs> and there we go. So that will do it, though. Hammer putting Manhattan College back in the lead right there uh, after that tie last set. So we got two more sets left. So it looks like we got another close one on our hands, Dara. Pretty much this next set determines whether Manhattan College wins or whether Ryder University has one more shot at glory. Sean, I'm going to keep it a stack with you. Uh, this is perhaps one of the most painful experiences of my it's the life. It's the best set I've ever watched. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you will you will see players of all walks of skill levels, you know, in this league as well. So it's important not to like. No, Sean, it was the lag. The oh yeah, the lag. Oh yeah, the lag. The was oh yeah, the, at, like, oh, oh yeah, the lag. F, F the lag. Dude. Why do you think they were they, it was they were playing at like fifty? Oh my homies speed. hate the lag. <laughs> it was like I felt it. I, I uh, yeah, felt no, the I latency. Felt it a little bit too. That's why it's important to have a wired connection. You, you, you can complain once you're wired. That's, yeah. that's when you get credence to complain about connection. Mm -hmm. If you're not wired, do not complain about the lag because it might be your fault. That's just how it goes. With anything, literally. You, you should have a wired connection for any video game you play online, really. Because it will affect your experience in one way or another. Yeah. Still vibing. You still, you still Never vibing. Never stopping vibing. <laughs> Man, that that game was like molasses. My heart goes out to those players. That's the brave soldiers on the battlefield. The, today. They're the ones on the front lines, and we're just <laughs> we're just the we're just the wives back home, man. We're just the wives. <laughs> We need to we need to we need to uh, take care of the victory gardens <laughs> and send them cans of jam. Hands of jam. Anyways, 
right now, right at the university, sitting at four points, Manhattan with nine to the name. This was the food set. Wow. We're already, we're already over halfway done with Ryder up against Manhattan. And uh, coming up after them, we should be seeing St. Peter's against Fairfield. Both schools have defined their rosters, so uh, they should be all good to go. So unfortunately, we might be running a little bit late tonight. But that is a okay. That's such fine. Is, we're such vibing. Is the we're having a good time. Baby We're just waiting for them to join up. I just hope everybody in chat is having a lovely evening. And even if you're not, um, sorry, I'm sending you guys hugs. <laughs> yeah, I hope everyone's having an okay time. Holidays are coming up soon, so you get to experience some Christmas cheer or any or, or Hanukkah cheer, depending on you know what religion you follow. Either way, um, yeah. So looking forward to to those gifts, the good times, the good food. Uh, Austin, you know, just hang in there. It'll be okay. Just hang in there. It's easier. We just, we just, we just discount life coaches at this point, man. <laughs> this wasn't, this wasn't in a job description to, to. But you know what? We do it anyway. It's why? Because we care love everyone. about the people. We, yep. Um. Yeah, we're just waiting for the next place to jump in. I guess we could shill stuff again. Uh, the the shill. The shill countdown has reset. So guys, number one, make sure that you're drinking water. We oh, have yes. two absolutely gargantuan bottles of water. Yes, please. That we're doing to keep ourselves nice and quenched throughout the evening. Number two, I want to see you guys get up and stretch. I want to see some hand stretches. I want to see some gamer stretches. Guys, I have really Important. bad hands. I have tendonitis and all that. Uh, really want to do this? You want to do some of these? You want to get in between each finger? There's like a whole routine that you can do. Uh, go check it out on YouTube because people make plenty of content for that. And with that being said, we hear music to our ears. People jumping into the arena ready to go. So, set number four, we are seeing... Uh, TLA versus Drobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got Violet Snake. and Snake. Yeah, what do you two think characters. About this? Three. Um... One, this matchup go. might. The thing about Byleth is that she she kind of fits a very unique slot on the character roster. Like everyone always thought, oh, Byleth's so boring. But like this character is a pretty good mid range fighter, honestly. With the spear of hers, she can juggle a little bit with up air. But I feel like Snake, uh, she's gonna have the hardest time getting in because she isn't the quickest character. She's not the most mobile character. But either way, we are out here with this connection once again. We're just out here. Who gets the upbeat out of the shield, tries to conclude it into the down is I gotta say, every time I see that, it looks so incredibly saucy. Um, especially in Town and City, I bet you could do like grounded down and uh, into up smash or something like that. I think so. Rob's already a pretty good start uh, thus far, to be honest. It's like really, really uh, hanging in there very solidly. It's using snakes grenades to really get something started up here. Uh, I saw a little C4 on the ground also that might come into play much better. But that strong up tilt is taking off that first stock off of TLA. TLA is going to have to make something happen here and start to really just use that nair. I love that side B right there to catch the jumps in because Probs has been doing that a fair amount. You just have to adapt to how Probs is deciding the land because that is the thing that Snake uh, struggles with the most. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Probs is just trying to get out of the corner here. I'm able to do so successfully. TLA giving them a little bit too much space. Um, I just feel like TLA... I mean, TLA is... TLA is struggling to find ways to get in on the snake right now. Uh, and I feel... And every single interaction that Probs, um, you know, is losing is only because they're the ones approaching first. Oh boy. Yeah, this is this is like you wanna make sure you're not trading too hard with Snake. You wanna make sure you're at least getting up a little bit in terms of percent or damage right there. I also wanna see uh some of these down airs coming out from TLA on these ciphers. Like down air has such a giant lingering hitbox that it can really just uh destroy Snake Cypher and even hit him through it. Like you can spike him through the stage sometimes when you do it. Yeah, Good definitely. Effort. Um, Snake is really vulnerable throughout his Cypher. If you have a big down air, just go for it. Um, worst that's gonna happen is you're gonna get hit by Cypher. Uh, it's just something that you should be able to practice in training. If you have Snake off stage, practice spiking him. Because for the most part, his angle is pretty predictable. 
But Probs really just doing what Snake does best. Catch landings with dash attack. Attack on damage. Great back air right there to take that stock. Need hot chip. Lie. You know, just basic safe. Yeah. <laughs> Tele's got to kind of watch out for that because it's, I feel like that back air has been the thing that Prob has literally been looking out for the most uh, in comparison to uh, TLA in order to get those kills. Oh my! Wow, just barely being able to survive that. This game is just <laughs> this game is saying, uh, I don't know about this one, boss. I'm not. I'm not feeling this. Not feeling this one, Chief. No. I, I I feel for both universities. This is the state of affairs we are currently in. TLA just backed out, let Rob the F smash, and then didn't have a punish. And sometimes that's the reality of Wi Fi, baby. You uh, you get stuck in your option, and you're like, wait a second, that's what they're doing. I, don't I can't react to this. Oh wow. boy. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Oh god. Oh jeez. Oh lord. Oh no. Oh god. What's happening? <laughs> oh my god. All that build up and tension for that move. Ooh, Cypher is so. I mean, uh, excuse me, Nikita. It's so powerful and, and just sort of denying uh, any sort of tether recoveries back onto the stage. Just being able to put a big hitbox out there for such a long period of time. Um, but that being said, TLA is still able to bring this back all the way to the last stock. The game seems to have smoothed its creases out, sanded down the edges. Now we're, uh, we're back at a semi fluid pace. All right, Probs though looking for this kill and no capacity, but he's got to watch his landings. That's one thing Violet is really good at. She's really good at catching these uh, landings in, both with that side mm -hmm. using Aaron Far and F Smash as well, but good parry right there for Probs. And the slowest Nikita pullout I've ever seen. TLA really needs to buffer this up here, otherwise that Nikita is going to be a huge issue. So I do really like the high recovery back onto the stage with directional air dodge. Um, really, really smart, just avoiding that situation altogether. The good part Bob? about the lag is that you have more time to adjust your decision making because only one input is going to come out at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. so you, if someone's doing something really bad defensively, you at least have time to find an answer for it uh, and react appropriately. It gives you more time. Regardless that Nikita is going to catch that tether right there. And they have the first game to probs right there. What a game it was. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, it was It was quite the game. Really felt like it lasted a while, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We're, we're out here. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, that's just the reality with any sort of tether recovery. And when you have projectiles like Nikita, like PK Thunder... They do an exceptional job of saying, hey, I don't even need to go off stage to commit against this. I can do this from on stage. And oh, whoops, you're back on the ledge. I guess I still have enough time to recycle the situation entirely. <laughs> you know, um, having being able to educate somebody without going off stage, man, blessing. Blessing, oh, let yeah, me tell you. Sure. I'm, a, I'm a little baby, okay? I, pl I play Ness. I'm a little Goo Goo Gaga toddler, okay? I don't, I don't want to go off stage. I don't want to go too deep into the pool. I might drown. Oh, God. Anytime I go up on his field, he automatically defaults his humming, and I love it. <laughs> what do you what do you think what do you think TLA could have done better this game? I think just I think Nair was a criminally underused move a lot of the mm -hmm. times in close quarters. Especially out of shield. It is Violet's literal best out of shield option. Comes out frame six, but the hitbox on this is massive and it is pretty reliable multi-hit to get your opponent off of you. Uh, you'll see a lot of Violet's tend to use that move because Violet doesn't really have a lot of super quick moves, you know? Especially, uh, it's, it's honestly her best option to get the opponent off of her uh, most of the time. But yeah, I, I think definitely more Nair in close quarter combat situations would be a lot better. It would help alleviate some of the pressure Snake does out of shield. Just, just a little bit. Just, 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 just a little. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my analysis on it. I feel like use a little bit more Nair to get off. Uh, try, to, try to chase off stage a little bit too. Like Arid Bar is a very, very strong weapon to use for both aerials mm -hmm. and same with aim air with down down air as well on violet like both are incredible uh for being really chunky hitboxes but so definitely throw them out yeah, but also in general i feel like it's difficult to give a fair assessment um yeah through, because, through the lag yeah it's, it's not even difficult. just through like in general through wi-fi 
we already like see people be playing differently on different play styles. Yeah. So and there's already like a dissonance between that and how they play offline. And then on top of that, add on to the fact that this was uh, perhaps one of the top ten laggiest games I've ever witnessed. <laughs> Well, we are we are nearing the end of it. I believe this is the second to last set of mm -hmm. uh, at least this block right here. Who needs an adapter? Send me your Venmo. <laughs> Shouts to Connor Sanders in chat. Just looking out through the past. All right, we gotta switch the hero though. So all that violet stuff, we just chuck that straight out the window right here. We got violet and snake on lilat right now. Uh, definitely a pretty weird stage i'd say you get a lot of whiff punishes on this stage but for hero i don't know how this stage goes to be honest yeah it's kind of an interesting dynamic also i i side b might be a really important tool for hero here just being able to use that out of the corner it has like all the you know benefit of a projectile without actually being a projectile in the sense of like it reaches an absurdly long distance uh and you don't have to re worry about it like canceling into the ground that's very true. Um, I'd say the snake, this stage might aid Snake a little bit better just because Snake has such a solid control on landings a lot of the time, and Hero mm -hmm. does tend to jump quite a bit. I really don't see a lot of heroes play super duper grounded just because most of his punishes, he, you know, they do have a lot of startup to them when he swings. Uh, Ooh. Oh, just yeah. interrupting the menu with the grenade though. Uh, yeah, you can't get too comfortable against, uh, against that with Snake. Good my man, the my man just keeps. He's like Yu-Gi-Oh, rather Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh. He just keeps uh, Tron cards, believing in the heart of the card. Hopefully, the right one will come up eventually, so we can get the right. And spell eventually, to get him up you know, he might just end up top decking. Yeah. Bounce, by the way, so useful in this matchup. So useful against projectile heavy characters like Snake, like Mega Man, like Villager, because they're entirely neutral. They're sending it around. How do I move, make my opponent move around grenade? And just like that, he can't be whiffing that swag. Bounce is definitely a good move to like be on the hunt for actively as it just pretty much inhibits grenades and allows you to completely mitigate a lot of what Snake's neutral has, which is, you know, access to them grenades. Definitely. Oh boy. Oh Magic boy. boost still being able to shield through all of it. That okay. is now a kilo with only 14 MP. This is the time for probs to capitalize, to hold, like just to break space. Approach. We got more buttons. You can edge guard this. Sure. You know, because Hero has now a very limited distance with which he can recover with Uppy. You have to capitalize. Yeah, especially when the, the MP is out, you have to try your hardest to really make sure you don't get hit, but make sure you can get Hero off stage because at a certain point, they, their spells, you know, they can't summon the big the big tornado to come out of the bottom of them to help them recover. Uh, and TLA has definitely been pretty liberal with his usage right now of, of uh, his spells. This is a tricky situation. Great! Great edge guard right there by Probs. Just using Nikita to mess with that show right there. Space Nikita just right was able to react and uh, be really, really calculated with it. It was just a good shot overall, and this game is really starting to run away from TLA. Uh, Probs just kind of saucing it right now, I have to say. Oh boy. Ooh, those took a lot of trades at once. Not so favorable for Probs either. Um, eating a sizzle like that, definitely not oh. what they want. I didn't even know there was a C4 there. Yeah, Rob's put it down. You know, I was wondering what his game plan was when he was leaving the C4 there a bit, but it looked like it, it, it was to catch the perfect roll right there. Okay, good F smash right there from TLA though coming out. Hero can come back. He definitely has the ability to top deck as he needs bounce. So useful coming back. Uh, but it's so unfortunate that they were not able to get the reflect of uh, the up smash onto Snake himself. Yes, Probs definitely has to be very, very careful here. But the Nair one into up tilt right there. Really good confirm wow. to take that game right there. And the whole set. So I believe that uh, sinks the victory for Manhattan College right there. I'm pretty sure there's really not too much. Uh, yeah, 13 to 4. It could happen. Actually, wait, no. Could it? No, it couldn't happen, actually. Yeah, that's it. That's the that's the, the whole tournament. That's it. Rather, so that's because the most that a team can own in one game is, or eight. one set, excuse me, is eight points. Yeah. Uh, and that's a double three stock, 2-0. You know, so not very easy to do. That being said, that means uh, we will be seeing 920 up against Duray. 920, of course, representing Greider University. And Duray from Manhattan College. This has been quite the, uh, quite the set, Sean. What do you think? 
this has been uh i'll definitely be telling my grandkids about how this one went in terms of internet connectivity yeah. back when they have uh nintendo has like fiber optic network or whatever in the future uh, mm -hmm. but back yeah. back when you know in the I'll future tell about the ye olden to, days yeah but in the future we'll be able to play fighting games with our heads um and and that way you can't actually john about even the send puts like what do you what, what you just thought long get body idiot that's that's the future of smash Bros. But yeah, thank you so much to everybody so far that has tagged along, that has, that has, despite the circumstances, come out to support both Ryder University and Manhattan College. We'll only be saying one more set from the school before we move on to the next one. Um, just wanted to plug a couple of quick little things before we do move on to the final set of the evening. Number one, first and foremost, if you aren't doing so already, you should be following EGF SSBU and official yeah. EGF on twitch.tv if you don't know what egfs is bu uh it's the stream you're watching right now one you're witnessing with your very eyes what you're witnessing with your very eyes absolutely number two you should come out and support our lovely lovely stream producers the this stream is brought to you by house of 3000 on twitter uh house of 3000 is one of the premier uh broadcasting organizations for super smash bros and other events uh, in Tri-State, but especially New York, they truly send the pinnacle, they truly set the pinnacle of what production could be for this game. Nobody really does it like them. You can check them out on twitch.tv slash house of 3000. This stream is brought to you by Dill. Uh, and then you, you can also follow my lovely co-caster, Fang, at twitter.com slash fan9s, twitch.tv slash fan9s, or youtube.com slash Fang plays. Um, Fang is a sweetheart. He's easy. He's a good Aww. boy. You should, you should, you should go follow him so for much. that reason. And also because he's a pretty good content creator. And then if Aww. you do feel so inclined, you could also follow me on Twitter at the Ram Girl Smash. I am the resident e girl, so I do all I do all <laughs> that kinds of stuff. And I also stream um, twitchtv slash Um If you if you're down for that as well, but yeah. We are moving on to the final set of the evening. Music to our ears. Hearing everybody jump into the arena. What do we got? We got 920 up against DeRay. Derry. This is Richter Derry. DeRay. Derry, I'm DeRay. Not sure. Might be DeRay. DeRay yeah. is the phonetic. Anyway, yeah. 920. I don't think we saw a 920 go Richter before ever. So I'm very excited because I, I I actually enjoy Richter quite a bit as a character. I think he's super, super cool. Now it's a pretty unpopular opinion, but... You got a whip, man. No other character in this game has like a, a whip as their, their neutral yeah, well, area. You know what? King DDD has a long hammer, uh, and it's fantastic. Ooh, <laughs> 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 That's a fucking like first practice whip. Yeah, that's the first practical use I've ever seen from that move ever, but I feel like Holy Water does that job a little bit better, but that's still really cool. Got Listen, he wanted to get a little swaggy with it, so he did. Goes for the back two for a little bit of stage control. Side setting up the old Goliath, just controlling all of the space. Oh, yeah. Wow, did you, did you see that down smash reach? Oh my <gasps> goodness. Yo. Yo, Derry's out here though. Yeah, 920 trying to use. Not really using too many projectiles, which is quite the unique playstyle I've honestly seen in comparison to a lot of other Belmont players, but I welcome it wholeheartedly. Derry though, just trying to space out the best he can, almost serving as kind of an execution task for 920 right now to, to be safe on his shield and also with his approaches. My man is just firing projectiles at him right now. I, I feel like Duguay is just like the one putting so much stuff out on the screen, and it just so happens to be like a beat ahead of 920. The 920 is not able to get a lot set up, not able to get a lot going. Definitely getting overwhelmed with all the stuff that's happening on the screen. Beautiful beat on the jump. What a link from Duguay. <laughs> Love this little bit of movement. Ooh, no, you can't respect X like that. Oh man, Axe has so much lag to it. You could just run up and grab Belmont for it. That's true. Yeah, that move just I mean, vulnerable. My man's literally pulling a giant titanium or whatever the hell, steel axe out of his pocket to throw it. But I love the Ray's uh, just strat right now, just kind of trying to wall out 920. It looks like he's very cognizant of what Samus's game plan is uh, in this matchup. I've actually never seen this matchup before, which is really interesting. Yeah, actually, you know, in, in hindsight, neither do I. I think. Uh, 920, almost able to get it with the dash attack though. Again, I feel like they're a little bit too close to set up from the ledge trap with the holy water. Either way, they're still able to call out that jump with the axe. Um, it's just really going to be up to DeRay just to be able to put more stuff out there and just not let 920 uh, get any of the traps in. 
Yeah, DeRay trying to make something happen here. 920 just trying to cling on and establish as much extra damage as he can with the stock. DeRay still not being able to get the big charge shot hit out just yet, but going to be catching that jump perfectly with forward air. It's such a good tool, and I feel like Samus can condition jumping a lot uh, when you're right in front of her. There's what? a great adaptation. Do they notice that 920 kept jumping in free ledge multiple times? That down tilt of Chloe is having an absurd amount of knockback, just being able to kill you all the way off stage, no matter what percent you're sitting at. Once again, back throw instead of the typical combo throw. Look at those little links. Yeah. Oh, shot, kind of shot is a, a good combo setup, actually. It has enough hits done to set up into dash attack. I believe back air as well. Uh, you can do a lot with that move, to be honest. I, th I think that stuff is so cute. Being able to go to down, beat you a little charge shot and seeing it all come together, it's like, yeah, this is just satisfying. I get it. I understand why the Samus fans like this. Yeah, she's such a freeform zoner. You can really, and her movement, like, with uh, Morph Bomb and her jump make her extremely hard to hit a lot of the time. So there's a lot of potential for movement to kind of avoid getting hit. Definitely. Do they trying to get a little something going? I love all of these down smashes coming from Do they just mostly because they are adapting to the fact that 920 is going a lot. All they keep trying to do is cross up with gold, cross up with gold, build space and interact. But Do they has just made lovely adjustments. Oh boy. Okay, right here we're seeing a little bit of advantage. Yeah, it's. I, we haven't seen too much ledge trapping, I gotta say, from 920 up until this point. My man was kind of just relying more on his aerials and his instincts to really get a lot of these hits. But now he's got Garay completely trapped at the ledge. Garay struggling to get off just even, just even a little bit. I like the high recovery right there just to completely mitigate any because a lot of uh, Belmont's options go pretty low on uh, Sans Axe. So you can definitely just recover high if you know he's going to be autopiloting, trying to recover low recovery. Take this! Beautiful use of drift from Delay. Oh, he's dead. Like, they haven't been hit by a single, you know, one of these um, projectiles. Just using down B really, really efficiently, I feel like. But 920's ledge trapping just turned up that last stock. Uh, it was it was just really, really solid. They were able to get so much damage off of it. Ooh, okay. Seeing a little bit of life back in 920. Uh, just trying to zone out. Pretty much just both these guys trying to poke each other out with their projectiles as well as uh, their normals. Uh, DeRay is just not afraid to be shooting these mini charge shots to really open up neutral for himself, which is a really interesting take on Damage, honestly. And just like that, 920 has effectively brought this back, almost completely getting the cross up. No punish uh, will attempt to option coverage from DeRay. And now it's just like a war of attrition at this point. Like who's gonna who's gonna get the big hit first, basically, off of all these little chip hits? We're Those almost tiny charge time. shots are so useful. Ooh, oh the wow, landing right into it, but no sweet spots though. Two guys are going to be living another day, but they cannot eat another one of those hits. Waiting that f -tail perfectly, recognizing that that's a situation that you need to go. You see the f -tail come out, that's when you roll. And then you try to slowly inch your way back onto the stage. That's exactly the kind of stuff you need to be doing against Belmont. Oh, that's a really great poke right there. How is 920 going to make it back? No. I'm opting to use the whip. Instead, just going for up here. Right there. Maybe they forgot about it's it. The second time, I feel like both of those times that they died because of that, they really could have whipped. They could have yeah. tethered. They could have whipped. Tragic. Uh, I don't know why the whip didn't come out, but either way, uh, that's gonna be a pretty solid—not really solid, but actually really close win for Deray right there. Just, yeah, I feel like 920 could have made that back with relative ease. Maybe my man this is a recent pickup for him or something like that. Or he's not sure, but that whip is like the main reason Belmont can make it back to stage most of the time because my man's aerial drift isn't the greatest. Yeah. More than anything, this was definitely a war of attrition. I think 920 really cleaned it up towards the end. The lead trapping was really, really solid. They like shifted the priorities a little bit at the end of this game, and as a result, I think they'll be able to establish a much more dominant lead in the beginning of game two. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, definitely. I, I completely agree with that. They they, they know what they're looking it. for now, yeah. right? They they understand this is the position where I get the most amount of damage in this matchup. This is how I should be approaching it. This is how I should be timing it. 
Um, and Dure definitely has some adjustments to make because towards the end, they were off stage or in disadvantage a lot. To the point they, where it was like, all right, buddy, you know? They had a very solid game plan, I feel like, going into the game. Like, they just didn't deviate too much. They didn't do anything too out of the out of left field or anything like that. Just sticking in there, shooting their little charge shot. And do my eyes deceive me? What character are we getting? Hey, random Bowser. Was that Richter a random as well? Three, Do you think? Two, one, go! I'm seeing random there. I guess because uh, they already know that they won. So maybe they just decided, hey, I'm going to go random just to just to mess around. We already got the W. We don't really need to do much more than that, mm -hmm. even if we lose here. This is Samus Bowser. I, I don't know what to say. I think... I think or oh, sorry, they're, they already lost, so they're just messing around. My bad. Two. The first one was random, too. Okay, holy moly. Okay, so yeah. I was gonna say. That, it's, it's interesting. That wasn't an awfully bad random, either. Yeah, like, no. Towards the, towards the end, you know, this definitely looked like a Belmont player, so... Mm -hmm. You know what? Good good looks to them. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's very interesting. I like seeing people go random in bracket because you, know, you never know what they're going to get and how like, good their fundamentals will be able to uh, to carry them through bracket. Did you see Bowser just pixels away out space that pulled it Menacing. I love that awareness from Delay. They just backed off uh, seeing Bowser going high with that double jump. So they didn't go through the traditional ledge trapping. They faded back with that down B. Grabbed Bowser, looked at him in the eyes for the second. <laughs> Stared into his soul. Let him know who's wrong. Yeah, already looking a lot better. Uh, if you're not confident with getting in with Bowser, this matchup I feel like it'd be living hell, especially at ledge, just because Samus' ledge trapping does the work for her most of the time. But DeRay, looking fairly solid, just has to make sure that they don't get run off aired or, or, or smash attacked or back aired or something like that. Great I haven't that. seen a single gun off neutral from DeRay, and in a matchup like Bowser, that's so important. Oh, it yeah. can just close out your stock so consistently. Bowser is so vulnerable doing that up B of his. Uh, you can't let him get away with that. Great space there right there. I'm loving these down smashes to catch the rolls by DeRay. Just really, really good stuff and really good awareness of uh, how 920 has been handling itself while on disadvantage. Yeet. Uh, I think in that circumstance, perhaps the side B would have been in, in order. Oh, yeah. Side B, side B is almost like the grab you want to go for most of the time, I feel like, just because it's only frame stick. Like, that's not, that's really quick for a command grab, and it can punish a lot of moves as well, especially if someone's sitting in shield, like, and on Wi-Fi, where some stuff just isn't reactable. So, gotta be very careful for that. Without a doubt, 920, sort of flubbing um, on that tech face just a little bit. They didn't want to overcommit, I guess, so they stick at center stage. Delay, though, just putting so much stuff out there on the screen, 920 being stopped in the tracks constantly. Once again, calling out all these goals with these down smashes, but jab one to jab two, baby. That, uh, that, that ain't a thing. All the special moves right now just coming out from DeRay, just trying to space out 920 the best they can. I'm liking these bombs to set up into a lot of cool chip hits they're getting. It seems like they're not trying to go for some crazy big hit. They're just going for like to wear the opponent down, just little by little, whittling them down with both bombs. Trying to just connect to that big finishing hit eventually. And they, they've they been very evasive as well, so they haven't really been getting hit by a lot of stuff on 920's part. 920 over committing off stage just a little bit. You always have to remember that Samus is just able to have so much sustain, but whipping that up be a free stop for 920, and suddenly they find themselves in the lead. That four is surprisingly not able to kill quite yet. That was, that was terrifying. Oh, well, yeah, for sure. Oh, getting the drag down there instead of the full hitbox of the forward air. Now 920, seeing things a little bit in his advantage uh, right now as he is getting DeRay up and up. This is the benefit of Bowser with him being one of the heaviest characters in the game. He can live forever. My man doesn't die easily. So if you have a play style that you have to chip away at the opponent, you might start just getting trades taken and you might lose the game because of that. 920 is really starting to run away with this. Uh, there is so much rage on deck. The next hit is definitely going to be able to take it. Delay this time going to be able to go low, just barely avoiding that back hit. That up being more than enough to kill. Bowser just exploding into the vertical blast zone. Uh, but Samus is no stranger to putting on damage really, really quickly at low percent, especially. Just able to get a little something going, especially with some floats. Um, and then I think we have a game here. 
All right, Ray, just trying to make something happen here, but the big Bowser back air coming out right there to slay that, and we're gonna go on to a game three right here. I guess the, the random pick worked out for nice money right there. That's really good. The, Bow the Bowser looked pretty solid, and they knew the hits that they needed to get. They were using the right aerials instead of going for like very more laggy ones, like. And they just found their kill a lot, a lot quicker than Deray was able to, which is mm -hmm. super important as Bowser is just kill quickly, don't get killed quickly. So we're coming back into it once again. I'm excited to see what what random will bless us with this time around. I'm ready. Are you? <laughs> I'm not 920. I mean, 920 looks really confident random with that Bowser. Zero. Okay, not the random. The random doesn't even bless me. No, no, too bad of characters. And Lucina does immaculately well against Samus. I gotta say. The other, the other, just go like triple random sometimes, and you get like overly specialized characters like Peach, Rosalina, and then Ices. You know, and it's like, well, <laughs> GGs. Um, but I feel like these are all characters that, you know, you just need like a general knowledge of them just to be able to play them at, uh, at some level. Oh, yeah. Know? Okay. Back throw coming off right there from DeRay. And DeRay, though, just being more of an aggressive wall this time around, just not letting 920 jump in his zone whatsoever. The charge shot is going to come out and knock 920 right off the stage again. Yeah, these bombs have been putting in so much work for Duray right now. Not able to find that tech chase quite yet, just holding on to the stage. Ooh, able to intercept the tether recovery. Are they going to finish the stock? They are not. Um, he chooses to back off and not overcommit. Oh boy. The grab once again. 920, yeah, the thing that Lucina excels at the most, I'd say, is offstage play against Samus, just because that sword does really well. Also catching jump. I feel like she catches Samus' jump super duper well. She can forward to edge guard, and she doesn't really struggle too much. Like, you're mostly getting punished if you decide to jump in or lean in just a little too much on Samus. Like, I feel like Lucina can play very, very safely against this character. 920 still holding down the fort, um, playing really safe, just as you mentioned. This is, this, is a very, this is a very chill pace game, you know? Oh, yeah. Taking it a little bit slow. And I think I think the Ray's play style, while that it, it excels really well and that it's consistent, but it can also bite bite him, I feel like, a little bit in the end, too, just because it gives the opponent way too much time to mount a comeback. Like, DeRay has been just been chipping away and trying to go for the big hit once the opponent put a percent where they can't, can't pretty much can't survive anymore. But uh, 920 doesn't really care about that. They're just hunting for those big hits, any situation they can find to really net themselves the kill. Duray really just seems to struggle to keep 920 off of them when 920 does manage to break the space. Most of that, I believe, just comes from the fact that, I don't know, sometimes Duray just, Ooh. we always, oh my no. god. The DI on that was a little less than stellar. I'm oh my mind. goodness. Uh, Cause Samus is a little bit heavier than people think that she is. I don't think that I should have been killing. Had any business killing around there. But 920 poised to make this W right here. DeRay has to come up with something and quit. Oh, he that, saved him! Not quite, no, but the directional air dodge. Did you see it? I think the directional air dodge killed him at the end. Ah, uh, tragic. Keep them alive, only to take them away. At the end. Oh, boy. All right. Now we're now we're looking pretty even this, this time around. Deray, now oh I, it is so weird when someone like gets the the shield thing where the the projectile bounces off of it in a weird way. Deray still continues to really slowly face this off stage that is so dangerous against Lucina who can match you. That could be it. And, yes. and that is it the with Deray finally clutching it out for the school. However many points to whatever points. Wow. We are uh, hopefully not as behind yeah. schedule as I thought. Pretty much just cinching the victory for Manhattan right there. Really good gameplay from DeRay right there. Good effort from Ryder University, but throughout through the through the lag and the, the tribulations, Manhattan College manages to take it over Ryder University. Today.
So, without further ado, that'll do it for this block tonight. Good games to both schools. Really good stuff uh, played on both sides. Uh, I believe the MVP for Manhattan College is going to be Hammer with an impressive five points. The MVP for Ryder University is going to be Yoshi Man with an impressive four points as well. Final score going to be coming out from uh, 5 to 17 uh, in Manhattan mm -hmm. College's favor. So, yeah, that'll do it for, for this block. If you guys have enjoyed uh, the stream thus far, make sure to drop follows to EGF SSBU as well as official EGF. Mm -hmm. um, for more collegiate esports action, you can also follow our technical director at House of Three Thousand, both on Twitch and Twitter. They do a lot of work for the tri-state scene and for Smash in general, and probably are the best technical directors in the game, as well as the best org in the game. Honestly, uh, you can follow Duramgar, my co-caster, at uh, Twitter.com/slash/DuramgarSmash, uh, and also Twitch.tv/slash Duramgaria, where they stream lots of awesome Smash action there. You can follow me at twitter.com slash fan9s and twitch.tv slash fan9s. I stream lots of stuff, mostly Smash, but also some other games as well. And I also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fangplays, where I upload uh, a lot of Smash content. I just recently uploaded a video where I rated Smash merch. So if you like people such as Ludwig, Best Nest, Panda Global, uh, definitely, or in Space Space also, make sure you go check that out. I think it's a pretty entertaining video and a lot mm -hmm. of other people seem to like it. So maybe you will too. Anyway... Anything, any uh, closing thoughts for this block, Dar? Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that was able to tag along, everybody that came out here to support the boys, support the schools. Uh, I'm going to keep it real with you. This was a painful one, but I'm happy that chat was able to, despite you know, sport, through the though. lag and through everything, was just able to help keep everything nice and entertaining. Um, we wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for you guys. So keep that in mind. And with all that being said, guys, once again, thank you so much to everybody that stopped by so far. We are now moving on to the final school of this half. Here we go. This we is it. We're actually going to go to a break just for a minute, but okay. then we should be back really soon. And the Good. last match between St. Peter's and Fairfield University will be beginning. So just stick around for one moment for that. Stick around, folks.